Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Buzz About Cricket. My name is Andy Buzzer and today's video is about the stance and setup for when you're going out to bat. If you're new to my channel, do press that like and subscribe button. But let's get going. So the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the stance and the setup is the head position. Now this for me and I think many coaches and many players would agree is the most important thing when it comes to cricket, uh, especially when we're batting. Uh, at the point of delivery, so when the ball is about to be released from the bowler's hand, your head needs to be level and your eyes need to be level. So regardless of what position you set up in, whether you know, you're like a Shanda Paul or if you're like a Steve Smith coming out here, if you look at everything that they're doing, although the, the positionings that they're creating here look a little bit irregular, the same thing is constant. Their head and their eyes are nice and level. So the main thing and the key point number one is making sure that your head at the point of release is still and looking straight down the pitch nice and level towards the bowler and your eyes are looking at the ball. If you don't have that and your eyes are uh, you know, at an angle, your head's in a position where it's not straight, your body's gonna tend to start moving towards that direction, plus you're gonna find it much harder to pick up the length of the line and the direction of the ball, especially if it's moving, swinging or spinning. Uh, when you're happy with your head and you're, you're, you know, you're feeling pretty comfortable, the key word is consistency. So whatever positions we're creating now, we're going to be doing that on a regular basis. So every time that we get to the crease, we're going to be looking to set up in the same sort of position. It doesn't mean we're staying in the same place every time, but the positions of which we're creating are roughly going to be the same. So when we look at the guard, when we're going down here, whether, whether you're taking a middle guard, leg stump guard, you need to put something there that you can consistently hit, whether that be a toe, whether it be uh, your bat. You need something there to align yourself up where you can kind of hit that point each time. If your guard changes, that's not a problem, as long as, again, we've got something to find that mark. The reason for that is when we've got that consistency, we're gonna have a better understanding of where off stump is. So for myself, if I'm taking center guard and my toe is on, say, just on the, uh, the middle stump line, I now roughly know that my off stump is about on my, uh, my right eye. Therefore, if the ball's traveling away from me, I know it's gonna be tracking towards fourth or fifth stump. If the ball's swinging in, I know I'm likely gonna have to be playing because it's gonna be hitting off stump or middle stump. When you're happy with your guard and you're consistently hitting the same spot, we need to find a very comfortable position. And being comfortable at the crease is key. Because if we're gonna be there for you know half an hour, an hour, two hours, we want to feel that physically we're not stressed out. And what I mean by that is it's no point trying to look all prim and proper and looking all uh, really nice if your body's aching and it doesn't feel comfortable to you. All right, so I want you to find a position where you're happy with, and I wanna try and think about the angles and the lines that you're creating coming from your feet, your hips, and your shoulders. We wanna try and create the same sort of angles. And if I'm stood here with a slightly open angle with my toes, I wanna to recreate that with even my knees to my hips to my shoulders, so everything's fighting or going towards the same sort of line, and my head's still going down nice and straight. If you prefer staying a little bit square at the crease, that's absolutely fine, as long as your hips and your shoulders are roughly on the same angle of your toes and your feet. What I don't like to see is batters having a crossed off feet position and then opening up with their shoulders because we start to create in different lines and therefore our back path can somewhat be uh, going down the wrong line or it's quite inconsistent when it's attacking the ball. When, we, when we're happy with our head, when our head's nice and level, our guard and the alignment of our feet and our hips and our shoulders are roughly the same, we want to start thinking about where we're putting our hands and our back. Now this is all falling into personal preference and realistically everything bar the head and bar the eyes, that is all personal preference and it's something that you've got to kind of discover and find for yourself. But when it comes to the hands, the biggest key that I would suggest doing is trying to keep your hands nice and tight to your body. Okay, you don't want to have your hands in a baseball style out nice and wide. It can come out when you're playing your shots, but to start off with, I would suggest try and keep your hands more towards your hips, towards your back hips. And I'd always suggest trying to keep the toe of your bat above where your hands are. So at the point of release, that the toe of the bat is up nice and high and it's not pointing down. So we're not wasting time trying to bring that back lift up 
then force ourselves back into the ball. Now again, when it comes to the back face with a back lift, I personally prefer it to be slightly open and naturally when the ball comes and attacks the ball, it squares itself up, okay? If we're stood and we're set with a square back face early, we tend to then roll the wrists and it's actually limiting the back flow of what we want to do. Different batters have different styles when it comes to a back lift. So Brian Charles Lara was up here really flying through. Steve Smith now we see again flicking out. Johnny Bairstow stays up nice and tall. The reality is there is no right or wrong answer to your back lift. The key points though stay the same. The hands are nice and tight into the body at release. And then when the ball is coming, wherever that bat is coming through, it's coming through consistently. And if it's coming through consistently, it's creating the same path over and over again. And therefore it's a technique that can be molded and worked for that individual person. The biggest things that I would be looking for and suggesting to maybe adapt or change is if your setup is indifferent and your hand position starts in different places or your back is actually coming across you uh, on different lines. That's when as a coach I would step in and say maybe it's worth having a look at adjusting the positions of where your hands and where your back are actually starting from. A stance or a setup is a bit like a puzzle. It's got individual pieces and when it's put together it kind of forms that perfect picture. But that picture for you has to be consistent, it has to be comfortable. If it's not ticking those boxes, it's going to be very hard to consistently perform because you're going to be worried so much about what you're doing here rather than the most important thing, the ball. So when we're setting up, when we've taken our guard and we've almost gone through our checklist, you know, feet are in a good position, hips, hands, head, everything then needs to be forgotten about because you're just concentrating solely on the ball. If we don't concentrate on the ball and we're not concentrating on reacting to scoring runs, that's when we're actually looking at a, quite a vulnerable position as a batter. All of the work and all of the things that we're, we're discussing here need to be done in practice and it's almost like that 10,000 hour uh, element and that, that theory that after you've done it consistently over and over and over and over again, it becomes second nature and you kind of forget about what your hands are doing. You forget about the positioning of your hips or your shoulders or your head because the only thing that is you know, worth considering or worth concentrating on is scoring runs and that is just watching the ball out of that bowler's hand onto the back face and running those twos and hitting those boundaries. Guys, if you've liked that video, press the like button. If you haven't already, do press that subscribe button. My name is Andy Buzzer. That was Buzz About Cricket. Always back yourself. Catch you next time.